Welcome to Hood War Stories. In this episode, I'll be discussing the life of Timothy McGee. Timothy Joseph McGee, also known as Wedo, was born on April 27, 1973, in Los Angeles, California. Timothy was primarily raised in the Atwater Village neighborhood, located north of downtown LA. His father abandoned him as a young boy, leaving the family and moving to Alaska for work. Locals recall Timothy as a typical kid who liked to skateboard in the community. His ethnic background is of Scottish and Mexican descent. He was given the street name Wedo, which is Spanish for light-skinned person. He attended John Marshall High School, which is located in the Los Feliz district. Timothy quickly became involved in Tunerville 13 during this time. Tunerville Reefer 13 is a primarily Mexican-American gang that is located in the Atwater Village neighborhood. At the time, Northeast Los Angeles was very territorial with gangs like Frogtown, Westside Locos, and the Rascals. In 1989, Timothy fired a shotgun into a crowd of people, severely wounded one man. He was sent to a juvenile facility because he was only 16 at the time. He was released four years later. In 1993, he assaulted a police officer in San Bernardino County and had to serve another four years. He was released again in 1997. In 1997, Juan and Pedro, who were from the Rascals, were chased through the streets of Atwater by Timothy. Timothy opened fire on the two, striking Juan in the back. He was paralyzed from the waist down. Pedro took cover at a gas station, standing behind a glass that he thought was bulletproof. Timothy repeatedly fired through the glass door, hitting Pedro in the back. Pedro would later recover from his injuries. On October 14th, 1997, Timothy drove through Frogtown territory, looking for enemies. As he was driving, he spotted Ronnie, who was a member of the Frogtown Reefer. Timothy then got out the car and approached Ronnie, who claimed that he had no gang affiliation. After being forced to remove his shirt and showing multiple Frogtown tattoos, Timothy unleashed a hell of bullets on Ronnie. Ronnie suffered a total of 28 gunshot wounds. He died at the scene. Timothy began to quickly climb the ranks of Tunerville 13. He was said to have killed for sport, even pretending to be homeless so he can catch his victim slipping. After violating parole in 1997, Timothy was in prison for about a year and a half. In March 1999, he was again released and lived with his grandmother in San Gabriel Valley. On October 17, 1999, rapper Corrupt and a few other death row artists were concluding a recording session at the Echo Sounds Music Studio. The crew had gathered on the studio patio at around 11.40 p.m. when Timothy and another gunman ambushed them and began shooting without warning. Corrupt's bodyguard, Dwayne Draws Dupree, was hit multiple times and pronounced dead at the scene. Death Row artist Javon Norillis Jones was wounded in the foot and Willard Actor Fool Givens was wounded in the calf. Daz, who was Snoop Dogg's cousin, was also at the studio that night, but he wasn't injured. On June 3rd, 2000, Ryan, who was from the Rascals, was walking home from a party. He was on the 3300 block of Silver Lake Boulevard, which is located in Tunerville gang territory. Timothy then spotted him and began to open fire. Ryan was hit and died at the scene. Timothy reportedly had told others that he had killed Ryan because the area wasn't big enough for two people with the same nickname. He didn't just limit his murders to gang members. On September 14, 2000, Timothy allegedly shot and killed Marty Robot Jr. Marty was a 17-year-old high school student who was drawing a picture at the LA River that day. He then turned his gun on 33-year-old David Lamont Martin who was a homeless man Timothy believed had witnessed the shooting. Allegedly while standing over David's body, Timothy turned to his fellow gang member and commented without emotion that he was hungry and wanted to go get something to eat. During his reign over the Atwater Village, Timothy ran his gang like a military organization, making members take part in group exercises and target practices. He also introduced Tunerville to tactical training and insisted that armed sentries be posted at every main thoroughfare into his territory with cell phones and radios to alert him of any suspicious activity. Over time, his killings became more frequent and less selective. In the pre-dawn hours of July 4th, 2000, Timothy used a police radio scanner to track the progress of two LAPD officers as they chased three Tunerville members into the heart of the gang's turf in Atwater Village. Gang members threw a washing machine and a bicycle in the road, causing a police car to swerve toward two gunmen that were waiting in the dark. Bullets struck the car, one tore a hole in the officer's pants, but neither were injured. Timothy had been incarcerated again for another parole violation, but
but this time at the California Institution for Men. He was released again in May 2001. Starting in June, he was suspected of shooting nine individuals in the span of five months, leaving six people dead and three wounded. The shooting spree began on June 11, 2001. Timothy was allegedly driving through the Los Feliz area when he spotted Manuel, who was just passing through with his pregnant girlfriend. Timothy allegedly opened fire in their vehicle on Los Feliz Boulevard near the Interstate 5. Manuel was pronounced dead and his girlfriend suffered severe brain damage, but their unborn baby was successfully delivered. In July 2001, Carlos was working at a furniture warehouse on North San Fernando Road in Atwater Village. Authorities say that Timothy had driven by and seen Carlos and ordered gang affiliates to kill him because he did not recognize him. The homicidal order was carried out successfully. Sometime in early August of that same year, Atwater Village resident Sherry Wasowski had reported to police that Timothy was dealing drugs out of his sister's house that was nearby. On August 8, 2001, Timothy and another gunman allegedly walked up and opened fire on Sherry's vehicle. Fatally wounded Sherry, her mother Marianne, and their neighbor Brim. On November 8, 2001, Timothy was allegedly roaming the streets with a fellow gang member, seeking revenge over the death of a comrade that happened hours earlier. Armed with handguns and rifles, they came upon a rival gang member, Dwayne. Dwayne was driving his Mitsubishi with his girlfriend Marjorie and a friend Erica on the 3100 block of Hollidale Drive. At around 12 midnight, Dwayne pulled up to a residence. Timothy and Eduardo allegedly pulled up in front of them. They proceeded to exit their vehicle and open fire on the Mitsubishi without warning or without any verbal altercation. Dwayne ducked and was struck in the right hand while Erica ducked in the back seat to avoid injury. As Dwayne threw the car in reverse and accelerated away, Marjorie was hit multiple times. She was driven to the Glendale Memorial Hospital where she later died. Tunerville gang member Eduardo was arrested the following day. Homicide detectives announced on November 27, 2001 that another suspect, Timothy, was still at large and a warrant had been issued for his arrest. A detective noted that ever since Timothy got released from prison, crimes in the Atwater area have skyrocketed. Christina Duran, who was a friend of Timothy's, had learned of Marjorie's murder after Timothy had asked her for help that same day. He needed to retrieve his girlfriend's cell phone that he had dropped at the scene of the Marjorie murder. Christina was unsuccessful in finding the cell phone, but police managed to locate it and use it later as evidence. Shortly after the murder, Christina admitted to police during a videotape interview that Timothy was involved. During the interview, Christina was shivering and shaking and kept expressing her fear of retaliation. Two days later, after speaking with police, Christina was murdered execution style on the 13200 block of Fairgrove Street in Baldwin Park. She was celebrating her 29th birthday that night. She was allegedly shot by Timothy five times in the right side of the head. Timothy wrote rap lyrics as a hobby, but never seriously pursued music. Most of his lyrics referred to his love of killing and his hatred of the police. One line that was eventually used against him in court read, when his protection won't work, realize your rat ain't gonna make the stand, which referred to his goal to eliminate anyone who might testify against him. He took the time to write, everything in his book is a work of fiction, inside a spiral notebook, in case it was ever seized by the police. This did not deter the prosecution in his eventual trial. A task force was initiated in 2002 after linking Timothy to numerous homicides. When it became clear that Timothy was running the Tunerville gang from out of state, the U.S. Marshal stepped in. They aided the LAPD in forming a task force with more investigators, vehicles, and even aircraft. Timothy was placed on the America's Most Wanted list. He spent months shifting between Atwater Village, Las Vegas, and Arizona, never staying in one place for more than a week at a time. He would even throw off police by staying in rival gangs' neighborhoods. A break in the case came when a reader of a newspaper recognized Timothy as a man who was living in Bullhead City, Arizona. Timothy's father happened to own a business there. The witness led authorities to an apartment on Raymar Street on February 11, 2003, where Timothy had lived on and off for the past year. He was arrested the next day after being seen leaving the apartment with a female friend. Timothy was held without bail at the LA County Men's Central Jail. He took control of his cell block while awaiting trial, getting inmates to violently riot when angry. He commanded inmates to assault the deputies with apples, oranges, urine, and bleach. One riot reportedly took two hours to stop the chaos. In 2007, Timothy was sentenced to death on three murder charges and four attempted murders. 
but lack of sufficient evidence and witness testimony got him acquitted of several other charges. He grinned as prosecutors described the gruesome details of his crimes. Timothy is currently on death row in San Quentin. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.